Greetings, my name is Dr. Madoha, and today we will be discussing ischemic stroke. Ischemic stroke is a type of stroke that occurs when the blood supply to the brain is cut off. This can happen if the arteries that supply the blood to the brain become blocked or narrowed. Ischemic stroke is a medical emergency and requires immediate treatment. This pathology has two main etiologies or causes. Number one is atherosclerosis. This is the buildup of plaque in the arteries. The plaque is made up of fat, cholesterol, and other substances found in the blood. Over time, the plaque can harden and narrow the arteries. This limits or blocks blood flow and can lead to ischemic stroke. Number two is emboli. Emboli are pieces of plaque or blood clots that travel to the brain and block the end arterial system. The risk factors for developing stroke in your lifetime are categorized into modifiable risk factors, meaning that you can change them, and non-modifiable risk factors, meaning that there's nothing you can do about them. The modifiable risk factors include Number one, smoking. This increases the risk of atherosclerosis and emboli, almost doubling the risk for ischemic stroke in your lifetime. Number two is heart disease. It is the second most important risk factor for stroke and the major cause of death amongst survivors of stroke. Heart disease and stroke have many of the same risk factors. Three, high blood pressure. This condition puts extra strain on the arteries and can cause them to harden and narrow over time. Next is diabetes. This condition in itself increases the risk of atherosclerosis. High blood cholesterol and lipids. High cholesterol levels can contribute to thickening or hardening of the arteries, which is atherosclerosis as we said before caused by the buildup of plaque. The plaque deposits, which are the fatty substances and the cholesterol and calcium, build up over time inside the arterial walls and decrease the amount of blood flow to the brain. That's when a stroke occurs, which is sudden loss of neurologic function. Excessive alcohol use. More than two drinks per day increases your blood pressure and binge drinking can also lead to stroke in itself. Next is use of illegal drugs, especially intravenous drug abuse. This carries a high risk of stroke from blood clots through cerebral embolism. Cocaine in particular is closely linked with strokes, heart attacks, and many other cardiovascular problems. Other modifiable factors include lack of exercise, obesity, and overuse of oral contraceptive pills. Now let's move on to the non-modifiable risk factors. These include gender, stroke occurs more often in men, but more women die than men from stroke. Next is old age. For each decade of life after the age of 55, your chance of having a stroke more than doubles. Now, family history. If you have a family member who has had a stroke, you're at greater risk of having a stroke. Now, what are the symptoms of ischemic stroke? The symptoms of ischemic stroke depend on which part of the brain is affected. The most common symptom is sudden weakness or paralysis of the muscles on one side of the body, other symptoms include sudden confusion, sudden difficulty speaking or understanding speech, double vision or a sudden visual field defect, sudden dizziness or loss of balance, and a sudden severe headache. If you experience any of these symptoms, it is important to call emergency services immediately. Time is of the essence in treating ischemic stroke. As the longer the brain is without blood, 
the more damage that can occur. Remember, time is great. How do we investigate for ischemic stroke? Emergent imaging is essential for ruling out stroke mim mimics, such as space occupying lesions, meaning tumors, or intracerebral hemorrhage. A non-contrast CT scan is the initial image of choice. As the stroke evolves, there are different pictures on the CT scan, depending on the timing from the ictus, ranging from a hyperdense segment of a vessel, which might be the first sign. This represents direct visualization of the intravascular thrombus or embolus, ranging all the way to hypoattenuation and loss of the gray-white matter differentiation as the stroke evolves. It's important to note a CT scan may appear normal if done within the first few hours of the stroke event. So what do we do if we get a patient who presents in the first few hours? We can do an MRI. MRI is more time consuming and less available than a CT scan, but has significantly higher sensitivity and specificity in the diagnosis of acute ischemic infarction in the first few hours after onset. Within minutes of arterial occlusion, a DWI will demonstrate increased signal and reduced ADC values. Other investigations include bilateral parotid duplex ultrasonography and digital subtraction. Now, treatment. Treatment for ischemic stroke may include thrombolytics, which are clot breaking or busting drugs, endovascular surgery to physically remove the blockage, or a combination of both. In some cases, a stent may be placed in the artery to keep it open. The American Stroke Organization and European Stroke Organization both have extensive useful guidelines on thrombectomy. Recovery from ischemic stroke depends on the severity of the stroke and how much damage has been done to the brain. Some people may recover completely, while others may have long-term disability. Luckily, this type of stroke can often be prevented through lifestyle changes such as quitting smoking, eating a healthy diet, getting regular exercise, managing cholesterol levels, and controlling blood pressure. Additionally, individuals at higher risk for ischemic stroke may benefit from taking prescribed medications such as aspirin or blood thinners. In summary, by making positive choices for our health and discussing any risk factors with our healthcare providers, we can significantly, significantly reduce our chances of experiencing an ischemic stroke. Thank you for your attention and have a blessed day.